Welcome to today's webinar. CareerCert is happy to have you. We're going to talk today about our approach to department-specific and agency-specific education. We have some simple solutions that we're excited to share with you on how you can create education that's very specific to the providers that you're responsible for. My name is Lisa. I am the Director of Customer Experience for CareerCert. I have spent most of my career in operational development and process improvement for a variety of different sizes of organizations and uh, different industries. I love client relations and I love customer solutions. I like finding problems and helping my clients solve those problems uh, through product. So I'm very excited to be with you today. I really have enjoyed all of my time at CareerCert. I am uh, consider it a real privilege to serve res first responders and people who spend their career really helping the communities that they live in. So I'm really happy to be with you today. We're going to talk again about the customized solutions that you can have to training inside of the CareerCert platform. So we certainly believe that quality education is the key to patient outcomes. If you don't have the tools and resources to distribute that education, training your providers can become very cumbersome. And so today we're gonna to talk about solutions for delivering the education that you have available to you as an educator, or you may be a training officer, you may be in a leadership position, maybe in a fire department, or you may be looking at career cert for the first time and trying to see how the tools and resources that we have provide a better solution than whatever you're employing at the moment. We're going to talk about tailored training. What are some of the reasons why you would want to tailor training for your department and the tools that we have to provide that for you? We know that recertification and, and education related to continuing education for your department is a requirement. But we believe that education for first responders is more than just what's required and that there will be customized content that you'll need to deliver to your department at a moment's notice. It may be in response to a multi-casualty event in your community. It may be in response to an infection control situation that's happening in your state. It also could be customized content that your medical director has seen fit to disseminate to all of the providers in your agency or in your department as a result of patient care statistics to see if we can improve the outcomes. Of course, you want to be able to deliver this anytime, anywhere, with a mobile device, with a laptop, and that you can record everything that your providers learn, all of the policies you may roll out through education, all of the improvements that you roll out through education, that you'll be able to keep track of these things in one seamless platform. So I'm going to jump in really quick into our platform. Your administrator dashboard is going to have several tools. We'll go over just kind of the general layout really quickly. These tools here comprise your record management. This is how you manage who is in your department, what are their licensure, what type of education have you assigned to them, have they finished it. And then we will move on here to basically your educator tools. This is how you build education using our platform. It's separated into five different features that we'll review today. So we will go ahead and get started and I'm going to be demonstrating for you how you would build what we have labeled as an in-house course so that you can distribute again customized education to your department in your time of need or on a quarterly basis, an annual basis, whatever it is that's going to be fitting for your department and for your team. So we're going to start with two steps that you'll need to complete before you start with your in-house course. And the first of those steps is an evaluation template. An evaluation template is basically building a post-course evaluation that you will attach to your course at the time that you build it. We have a few that have already been built by this educator. Again, there might be a different evaluation if you're rolling out a simple policy, like an update to a leave policy. If you're dealing with an education piece, maybe something that has a case study or something that may be an in-person course 
or something that has a video or a hands-on application, your post-course evaluation and the questions that you ask your students may vary. And so you can create as many or as few evaluation templates as you see fit for your training program. So we see there's a few built here and the questions will range from agree, strongly agree, disagree, and it helps you to be able to measure the outcomes or at least how your students feel after they've completed the education that you've assigned them. After you've created your evaluation template, you also want to make sure that you have a certificate template that's going to be appropriate for the education that you're assigning. Again, very flexible. You can have as many or as few certificates as you would like. For example, you may have a different certificate for your continuing education as you do for your contact hour type of education. If you are creating a course that is meant for compliance but not for approved for continuing education in your state, then you would create a course and give it a contact hour. When you build a certificate, you can put your logo simply by uploading a file here. You can also choose the signatures that will be attached to your certificate by adding them here and here. The title of your certificate does not appear here on the certificate. What it is is the title of the template that you're creating. You can place whatever statements that your state or perhaps your CAPSI accreditation providership requires that you have on your certificate and it will appear here. In this case, I'm creating a specific template just for contact hours. For example, this may be attached to a course where I'm disseminating a policy about not returning to work if you've been exposed to an infectious situation. And by disseminating that policy, I do need a certificate just to show that the student completed the course, but it may or may not qualify for continuing education. You're going to put your company information. If you do have a provider number from your state or from the National Registry, then you will need to put your company information. That is a requirement, so we provide this space for you to do that. Again, you can see that there is a preview, and this information that's user-specific or course-specific will be filled in as the user completes the course assigned. So here are the templates that we've created as this educator. And now that we've done these two steps here, we're gonna talk about in-house courses. Again, as educators, we want you to be able to roll out very easily any type of education that you have in the system. We wanna make sure that the steps are so straightforward that you wouldn't hesitate to track completions by administering education in the CareerCert platform. You should be able to go from starting the process by clicking new in-house course all the way to releasing this education on your own with all the tools that are in the platform. And it really is just a matter of minutes. If your education is prepared and your materials are straightforward, you shouldn't have any trouble going through these few simple steps to create your course. When you click new in-house course, you can see this is the process that we're gonna build here. You start with your course information and you work through the steps. I am going to demonstrate, however, with this course infection reporting protocol. It actually has a date on it so that you can see the ease of use with something that we've already laid out for you. As you click on this, you can again see simple steps to create your course. You're gonna start here with the course information, requires a title, a location, this is a, conti a continuing ed requirement if you're doing an in-person course. So this is typically city and state, however you've registered the course, the instructor's name. In the description, this is exactly as it will appear in an assignment or in a library for your students. I would suggest perhaps including the objectives of your course or the purpose of the student's experience. When you choose your course kind, it will control which of these libraries that your students will search for the education in. And each of these libraries is tied to their licensure. So if you are sending this ed education out to paramedics, EMTs, you will want to choose your EMS course kind. If it's something for fire officers or firefighters, you'll choose fire and it will disseminate accordingly in the library here. 
Your levels are specifically for EMS. You can see them here. For this course, we're gonna choose combined. And depending on the way you've designed your course, you may not have the ability to require that the student view the screen for a specific amount of time. We do have time limit availability to you as an educator so that you can at least control the number of seconds before the exam is opened for your learners. What this means is that if you have a two hour course that counts for two hours of continuing education, you may place a time limit here that represents the number of seconds the student should spend in the course and the exam will open until all of this time has expired. Accreditation is fairly straightforward. You're going to click on the add accreditation button here. You're going to fill in the necessary information, of course, as well as the start date and the expiration date of your accreditation. The Career Cert platform will also notify the educators when this expiration is coming due on your courses. Just make, make sure that the um, learning management system is in sync with your expiration dates. And then if you do have a new accreditation number, that it sends you a reminder to come in and update this course information so your students are never taking courses where the accreditation is expired. You can see also that we have contact hour optionality. Again, we want to make this as flexible as possible so that any information that you want to get out to your entire team can be done through in-house courses. If you have onboarding materials that you put every new provider in your department through, you can certainly use this functionality to disseminate that education to them. It doesn't count for credit hours, but you can put a contact hour on it so that you can still maintain this accreditation function here and then send any type of education out to your students. Once your course information has been added, you can move on to the slide section. Now in the slides this is essentially where you're going to build all of the course content that your students will experience. You can do this in a couple of different ways. We support videos as well as SCORM packages that may be created in programs such as Articulate or RISE 360. You can also upload standalone files like PDFs, images, as well as perhaps a PowerPoint document, a Word document, or even just a video, even if it's not hosted like this one is on YouTube, uploading an mp3 or mp4 file. This particular course has been built with objectives at the top. This is just simple text that will appear on the screen for the student. We have a video that's hosted on YouTube. Simply putting the URL of your video here will allow your students to view it within the LMS. They don't have to go anywhere else to view the content. And lastly, we do have a PDF, which is a five page article. And again, we'll preview this so that you can see what it looks like for your students' experience. You can choose when you upload standalone files that they can be downloaded by your students. It could be that at the end of this course, you have resources, tools, forms, maybe a policy that you just want people to have access to at any time. If you click this download button, your students will be able to download the content in their student experience. If you uncheck it, it will only be viewable and they will not be able to download. You can move your slides around from any order simply by drag and drop. You can delete a slide and you do receive a warning that when you delete your content, it cannot be recovered. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and delete this slide. And then I am going to go ahead and add a slide so you can see what it looks like just to add some files in. So here's the PDF that we were just viewing. 
So we can see that our PDF is now uploaded. The status is complete. I'm going to go ahead and click this download button just so that you can see in the student experience what that's going to look like. Once you're done building your slides, we do give you the ability to preview your course. We certainly would not expect any educator to roll out their education without having a chance to see what their students are going to experience. What is the user experience going to be like? And we assume that you'll want to do a quality assessment of that experience before you release. When you click preview slides, here's our welcome. These slides here, in the order that we saw them on the previous screen. You navigate choosing next. You can add images to your slides. Here is the video from the World Health Organization. You can see that it's embedded right here within the screen for the student. When I play, you can see that the, the video continues to play. I have muted so that we can continue our discussion. But having this video embedded here in the screen allows for the video to play for the student without them having to go to any other tab or window, and they can basically experience the video right here within the learning management system. Again, with a simple URL in the box. Next, this is the PDF that we uploaded. It does represent one slide on the screen, but you will see that here's the navigation from page to page within the PDF. Or you can simply scroll through as you would expect to be able to with a document of this type. Again, this is a great example of being able to build something engaging outside of the platform and to reuse content that you may be using in other ways. YouTube videos for training, things that you find in the industry, very simple to take that education and disseminate it to all of your students. And then our last slide is perhaps maybe your a logo for your department. Maybe it's the picture in the bio of the educator. We always suggest that you use a slide to create references. Now that I've built the slides for this course, moving on to the exam, you'll title your exam as well as maybe instructions for your student. These are instructions about how to navigate the exam. We provide them for you as a template. Max time allowed on the exam, questions to present to the student, what is considered passing and how many attempts do you require for the course. These two boxes are checked. Best practices are to randomize your exam questions for every attempt and to randomize the options in your multiple choice as well for every attempt that you provide the student. We check these boxes by default. We know that as educators, we want to give you access to the best practices in education, controlling the amount of time students have on the course, controlling how many questions you present per CEU, what's considered passing attempts, all of these things available for you as tools in that platform. Here's an example of question text that we've built. Simply paste your information here. You can choose a file to upload. For example, you may be choosing an image of a label that you may see on hazardous material, identify what the label means. You could put in ECG response and ask your students to identify what they're seeing and your multiple choices here. You will be asked to select the correct answer for each question. If there's not a correct answer selected, the exam will not be valid. And this box will be read as a reminder to you visually that this question is missing a correct answer selection. You can add as many or as few multiple choice questions to your exam, but we always require that you have an answer explanation. This is essentially the rationale of this exam question. This text here is a direct quote from the coursework, validating the correctness of this answer against this question. Rationale will be presented to your students whenever they get the exam score and the feedback from their exam. 
following every attempt, they have the opportunity to review the rationale and the explanations that you've entered before taking another attempt on the exam. So you can see here's an example of an exam that we've built. If I click this button, I'm adding the fourth question into this question bank. That means right now I have three questions, which you would probably seem as appropriate, seeing as we're going to present two questions to the students and for every attempt, we're going to randomize the questions. That means that every attempt, neither in the questions that are presented nor in the multiple choice answers that are offered is going to be the same. Those of you who have been doing this a long time, you know that's the best practices that are traditionally required in EMS education. Lastly, we have evaluation. This is again from the templates that we could see over here as we built an evaluation template. Whatever you've built in this tool here will appear in the dropdown. In this case, we're going to assume that we're rolling out a new policy, but we could say that we want to the education we're presenting has several case studies, or it's a course that's entirely made up of case studies. You may want to ask different questions about the effectiveness of your in-house and live instructors, about the videos that are presented. Again, we want to make sure that you can create as many or as few templates so that you get the feedback that you need to continuously improve your education make sure that your providers are getting the material and getting the concepts that you're attempting to present and that if they're not you have the data to make the necessary changes post course evaluation is a requirement once you've done your evaluation you choose your certificate again from the templates that we have already developed now we know that as educators your main goal is to make sure that the providers that you're responsible for not only have access to the content that is necessary for them to appropriately care for their patients, but that they truly are learning something and that they're taking the information that you've taken the time to present to them back out into the field to improve their patient outcomes. So let me take just a minute to show you once your course is active and your students have been using the course maybe for a month, 60 days, that you have access to both exam reports and evaluation reports. The course we're working with isn't live, but I do have an example of what an evaluation report would look like. Let's just say this is a period of time, one year. These are the courses that are the questions that are on the evaluation template for this course. And as an educator, I can come in here and I can start to look at the lower end of this scale. I can create for myself what is an acceptable threshold of people who don't agree or strongly disagree with having learned something that they can use in the field. I certainly suggest that you create some type of threshold for yourselves or for your department and that you consult with the leadership team uh, where you work to determine what would be the appropriate threshold what's what's a yellow flag that a course needs to be reviewed not necessarily for its clinical accuracy but maybe for its instructional accuracy again you can do the same with your exam data Here's an example of exam information for 783 participants in this course. This is the correct answer. How many people or a percentage of the participants selected this correct answer? What was the other answers that they selected that aren't necessarily correct, but maybe they answered in high percentage? A career cert, we monitor our exam data on a monthly basis so that every single one of our courses is evaluated on a quarterly basis. Things that we're looking for in our exam data is to make sure that there isn't perhaps an objective in the course that isn't being taught thoroughly, that perhaps our exam questions are worded poorly, or that we're with semantics maybe tricking the students a little bit into the incorrect answer. You have seen in the demonstration that choosing the correct answer is a manual process. It's possible that we have an exam question where we've simply checked the wrong correct answer. This exam data that's available to you will help you 
to understand that information and make sure that all the time that your providers spend in education is well spent. They're coming out of that experience, understanding the things that you want them to understand, and that they're going to have practical applications for the things you've presented in the field, and therefore your communities are going to benefit. So we'll go back to our platform. You can see green checks all around. We are done creating this course. We're going to now simply show this course in the library by clicking this box. This course is now available here in the EMS library for any students that belong to your group account. Also showing in assignments is going to allow any training officers or leadership personnel to use our assignments and our training plans feature to require the education be completed and be completed by a specific date. If you wanted to keep record of your exams, you can print a test key here. It basically downloads a PDF version of your exam. If you have review requirements inside of your department, we would suggest that you use perhaps this downloaded PDF of the test key in order to disseminate that to a second reviewer. So now we've created an in-house course. This is an example of a completely self-paced course. Providers inside your department or agency can take this course at any time inside of the Career Cert EMS course library. They can take it on a mobile device, they can take it on their laptops, on their iPads, and they can do it anytime. We're also going to give you just a brief overview of our in house exam feature. An in house exam is basically a way to test and record completion of a course that took place in person. So you can see we have all the same features here in our in-house exam as we had in our in-house course, except for the slides. You won't be building slides or content in the in-house exam. Essentially, this is the way to record completion, exams, evaluation information, and certificates for courses that you teach in person in your department, where you want to send all of those users back to the Career Cert platform to take the exam evaluation and receive their certificate. We know that education in EMS, as well as in fire departments and non-emergency transportation departments is definitely dynamic. There's going to be specific topics and we all kind of know what they are that can really only be done in person. You really only can teach your skills evaluations of perhaps your resuscitation practices, your BLS and your ACLS, you can only do it in person. There are going to be certain things that you want your entire team together when they learn, so that you can have maybe a dynamic conversation about the topic, especially when maybe you're trying to address some patient care statistics that are affecting your region. There are many, many skills that our providers can only practice, learn, and be assessed upon in an in-person environment. We certainly invite you to create as many in-house exams so that you can certainly measure the retention or effectiveness of that uh, in-person training as well as receive all of the data that's available to you in evaluations and exam reports. Lastly, we're just going to show you briefly the Schedule Live course feature so that we can make sure that as a department you're also able to schedule a specific date and time for your providers to register for those in-person courses. So we're gonna just show you a pretty simple process of this course that we've already built. We're gonna click here, new in-house schedule. You're going to search for the name of the course that you're looking for. You're going to create a date when the course will be held. You can also create several dates as we could see on the screen before for the same course. I've already created two schedules. Let's just say the course will be occurring at four o'clock p.m. and it is a 90 minute course. So we're gonna go to 5.30 p.m. The enrollment max allows you as an educator to determine the number of students that can be in the class. There may be physical demands in the location where you hold the class. There may be bandwidth demands of the educator based on the topic or the educator themselves. And you can control how many students are allowed to register for this class just based on changing the number of people that can enroll. When you click create, now I have a schedule here where my students 
can enroll in this course using their live course calendar. This person's also enrolled in one of our National Registry refreshers. And now you can also see that they have access to register for any live classes that I've created here in the system for them. So just in summary, I wanted to invite all of the educators who are in our platform currently and any who are considering career cert for your continuing education and your education overall needs to just consider that we do have in-house courses, in-house exams, as well as scheduled live course to make sure that we're doing the very best that we can to meet all of the various needs that comes with training in the pre-hospital and public safety environment. We know that education is a robust topic. Training is important. We want to make sure that not only is it simple for you, but that it's straightforward for your users as well. We certainly have appreciated your time in this webinar. I hope that you've gotten something from the time that you've spent with us that you can take back to your departments to help you improve maybe the ease or the efficiency, the amount of time that it takes you to put together training programs that you can send out at a moment's notice, totally customized for the providers that you serve, and something that can really affect your providers anywhere that they are, and as well as reports and statistics that are gonna help you control the quality of the education that you've prepared and try to make improvements that are gonna help patients in your community have better outcomes. We really, really appreciate your time. It's a pleasure for our customer service teams to answer your questions and be of service to you. If these are products that you currently have available to you in your career cert account, please do not hesitate to reach out to us if you need any assistance in implementing them with ease and convenience for your team and for your staff. Thank you again.